Okay, welcome to uh, Hatfield's Town Hall meeting, December 19th, 2018. Um, announcements. I start with announcements. First of all, I'd like to wish everybody, uh, you and yours, a very happy holiday season from, from the board. And I'm talking about that. So the luminarium will be coming up, and it's a heavy schedule. Hopefully everybody can attend uh, at 4.30. Uh, the library will have Out of the Darkness at 5 o'clock at the library. will be so story time. Uh, 6 o'clock here will be the singing. And 6.30 will be at the fire station for cocoa and, and coffee and donuts. And 7 o'clock will be the Lunarium concert after Congregational Church. So I hope everybody can attend and have a safe holiday. Uh, any other announcements from my colleagues? No. no, I have none. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is anybody here for public forum? Okay, topic one, we're going to go into appointments uh, on the planning board for Stephanie Slish. Uh, I don't know if you need to say anything, but I, I appreciate the fact that Stephanie is stepping up and being on the board, and I appreciate her efforts to come forth. It's like the next generation. Uh, we need that next generation, so I think that's great. So I'm going to make a motion to appoint Stephanie Slish to, to the planning board. Second that. I have a second. Motion made, motion seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is it a, Aye. Is it a roll call? It's a joint vote. Yeah. Because yes. the planning, planning board's board got a vote as well. Too. Okay. Okay. So you, you're going to do it as a roll call or how do you want to do it? Or just roll call. Roll call. Okay. okay. So, Moriarty, aye. Jaworski, aye. Dodia. Labby, aye. Paul Dost, aye. Bob Wagner, aye. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. I guess that's unanimous, so yep. motion carries. Uh, I noticed, Marlene, that you have in current member. What does... Uh, in current member. Oh, and current member Michael Poshik to be, yeah, the second bullet doesn't belong there. Okay, so that doesn't... So there, the board is selected. It doesn't require the, the planning board to vote. The planning board is recommending to the board of selectmen to have Michael Poshik appointed to the Pioneer Valley Conservation Compact. Is that... No, Pioneer Valley Planning Pioneer Commission. Commission. That's, okay, that's what I thought it was. Okay, okay. That's what I had thought, but I saw that and I thought well, maybe it's something different. Yeah. So I'll make that motion okay. to appoint uh, at the planning board recommendation Mike Poshik to the be the planning board rep for the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Second. And I have a second. Any discussion? Nope. Motion made, motion seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, while Bob is here, I'm gonna go out of order and I I want to discuss, we're going to move to the Chapter 61A property in North Hatfield. I, I know that you have a report on that for us, so. Yeah, thank you. Um, Bob Wagner, uh, Chair of the Planning Board and also Chair of the Ag Commission. Uh, so I think you know from communications you've received from the Planning Board, the Ag Commission, and the Conservation Commission that all three committees have encouraged or recommended that the uh, the select board investigate exercising the right of first refusal on this particular property on, as uh, allowed uh, under Chapter 61A when someone wishes to remove the property that's otherwise covered by Chapter 61A, the property tax relief program, and change the use from, in this case, agricultural use to, um, to a developed use. Uh, we are aware that there are uh, potentially three approval non -re uh, not required lots on that parcel, one on North Hatfield Road, two on Straits Road because of lot size as well as uh, road frontage. But we also, the planning board anyway, at our meeting with the representative of the, of the owner uh, indicated that the plans are for there to be a uh, housing subdivision on that property. So um, uh, myself, along with uh, Mark Jalot of the Open Space Committee, have been uh, having 
detailed conversations with uh, a couple farmers in town who have expressed some interest in continuing to farm that land or to actually own it at some point. Uh, we've, uh, uh, we've been talking uh, with the Kestrel Land Trust about putting together a potential package to uh, protect that property uh, and keep it primarily in, and the majority of it in agricultural use. Some of those house lots may be required to make up the difference uh, between what uh, might be available in terms of selling the property to a farmer and also then uh, raising money for a conservation easement on the property. Uh, the Community Preservation Committee has uh, two grant proposals before it. Uh, one for funding from its open space account to go towards a conservation easement on the property, and the other one uh, from its housing fund to uh, potentially uh, uh, purchase at a discount one of the allowed house lots uh, to uh, donate to Habitat for Humanity. So that, because uh, as you know, we have a lot of money in our housing account in CPA, and uh, we also are very far behind the state mandate of 10% of uh, housing stock be uh, permanently affordable. We're, I think, at 3.3%. So there's a lot of people and a lot of energy going into trying to pull something together that would um, allow this collective group to recommend to you to exercise the right of first refusal. Uh, or transfer it uh, as allowed by law to the Kestrel Land Trust. Uh, there's a representative here tonight from Kestrel Land Trust, Mark Walmsley, uh, if you would like to hear from him. Uh, we're not asking tonight for you to actually vote to exercise the right of first refusal because that actually triggers another clock uh, in, the, in the statute. Um, if, we, if I remember correctly, Marlene, the letter that came from the landowner uh, acknowledging that they wanted to be removed from Chapter 61A was dated October 8th. Uh, and so we, yes. could, we can use that as the starting time for the clock. There's 120 <clears throat> days during which you can make a decision. Beginning of February. So beginning of February, once a decision is made, and if the decision is to uh, exercise the right of first refusal or transfer that right of first refusal to, say, the Kestrel Land Trust as a, a bona fide eligible conservation organization, a second clock starts, which is that the property the would need to be, a down payment would need to be made right away, and the closing would have to happen within 90 days. So there's a lot of pieces that need to be put together. Um, would, would you say, Bob, that one of those pieces also is the financial aspect to the town? So, so right now the property is in 61A, mm -hmm. and so I know that you don't, uh, the town does not get a lot in the way of taxes, right. but we also don't uh, uh, really supply any services <clears throat> either. Um, as you know, I worked for American Farmland Trust for many, many years, and we had a little cottage industry for many years of doing what we're known as cost of community services studies. And when we completed the one on three communities here in the Valley, I remember the Hampshire, Daily Hampshire Gazette above the fold headline was, cows don't go to school. And um, <laughs> so while we would potentially see significantly more uh, tax revenue from perhaps a housing subdivision out there. Um, the, that housing subdivision is going to come with a lot of costs. Oh, and, I agree. I, I think my, yeah. I, I probably didn't yeah. ask the question the right way. I guess it's about the price of the land. So itself. the price that's, of the, that's what I was referring yeah, okay, to. Not, so the, not so much potential tax revenues, right? But how's the town going to pay for that? Land? So the so the way, and this is all at this moment. And I have to say theoretical, right? Um, is um, under the state law, the town, when exercising the right of first refusal, has to match the bona fide offer that has been made. So um, we know what that price is. That price has to be met. Um, if we are able to work with Kestrel Land Trust and the, tra and the, and the right of first refusal is transferred to them, um, and Mark, if I'm uh, uh, speaking out of turn at any point here, please jump in. Um, but one scenario would be that 
they would actually pre-acquire the property. They would purchase the property at that $430,000, and then all of the other pieces would come together to pay them back. I have a question. Yeah. I, I did see a letter that the owner has said, if at all possible, keep it farmland. I mean, that's, right. that's his intention, because once you lose farmland, it's gone, right. and you hate to, he hate to lose it in this town. But my question is, if Kestro was negotiating, could they negotiate with the owner if they didn't have the 450, if maybe it was 380? Are they now allowed, or are you stuck with, with the seller's agreement of what it was? Um. Well, what I will say is, um, and, I, and I've had a chance uh, in my capacity with the Ag Commission to, to talk to this landowner a number of times over the years as he was trying to come up with strategies to protect the property. And without going into a lot of detail, I know that there are family concerns about basically getting the, getting the money out of the land. And so he's not in a position to buy out those other family members. Okay. And so that has what has precipitated the property going on the market and, um, and now where we're at today, which I believe is why he sent the letter as is one of the owners that if indeed something could happen, he would be, you know. So the price that they're, they have is the price we're stuck at. Or yes, I'm going to ask Mark Wamsley actually to talk about that technicality because that is an interesting wrinkle to all of this. Um, sure. Good evening, everybody. Mark Wamsley, Custer Land Trust. Um, yeah, I, I mean, basically, as uh, Mr. Wagner was saying, uh, as long as the project is within the Chapter 61 right of first refusal process, we're basically limited to exactly what the agreement is struck currently between the, you know, the property owner and the buyer. Um, if for some reason, you know, that, that relationship or, or that agreement was terminated at some point in the process, the buyer, you know, maybe the buyer backed out, um, something could t potentially be renegotiated. You know, it's a, a blank slate at that point. Uh, but right now, it, if it is going to proceed as a right of first refusal acquisition, yeah, it, it, there's no negotiation, really. You just so, have to So imagine. right now, Kestrel is sort of, are, are you saying from Kestrel's side of the house, you guys are interested in helping the town keep that farmland or uh, meeting the price? Or what, are, or what are you saying from the Kestrel side of the house? Absolutely. I, I mean, we're basically taking the community's lead. We, we were approached by several people in, in Hatfield, uh, mentioning this was an important piece of farmland. Uh, and we're basically here to help, you know, make conservation projects go through when a town needs any assistance that we can offer. Uh, yeah, I mean, technically we can, again, as a conservation organization, be assigned, you know, the right of first refusal. A lot of pieces would need to come into place. I mean, basically we would need to, to borrow the money to purchase the property, and in order to borrow the money, we'd need to take out plan in place in terms of knowing where all the pieces for us to get reimbursed would come from, and they'd have to be pretty much set up uh, for us to, to move ahead with that way. But we're absolutely willing to explore that. Uh, you know, again, many people have come forward to us saying they want to protect this property, so we're happy to explore it with the town. And to follow up on that, Ed, um, and Mike actually uh, made the good point that, so this property is, um, between North Hatfield Road and Straits Road. It runs between both roads. Uh, it's uh, two parcels removed from a permanently protected farm ground, the Regish property. It's uh, across the street from other protect, permanently protected farmland uh, owned by the Williamses. It's adjacent to a very active uh, agricultural operation, the Black Birch Vineyard. Uh, it's a you know, it's a farming area in town. While it's zoned rural residential, it is a farming area in town. It would be an area that would be, you know, road furniture lots aside, it would be um, it would be a challenge, I think, for the town to have a primrose path size subdivision out sort of that oh. far. If you well, I, I understand what you're yeah. saying. I understand that it seems that the consensus is to save it as farmland, and and I and I think that's great. But I'm, I guess I'm trying to understand how do we get there with, with the present owner. I mean, is a town going to have to put up a ton of money? or No, so as, from... as Mark was just saying, if the town, uh, and 
I don't think the town would take this step unless you heard again from myself and others that we've been able to put together a package that is going to satisfy Kestrel Land Trust that they can get their money out. And uh, satisfy our lenders, even more important. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're diligently working on that. I'm meeting with people again tomorrow um, uh, on the site. So, and, uh, so it's not for a lack of effort at this point. Uh, if indeed we are in a position and knowing that we don't, you know, we want, we don't want to drag this on and hold the landowner up any longer than we need to, uh, if we feel like we're in a position that, you know, the ducks are all getting in a row, then we would like to come back to you to ask that you exercise your right of first refusal and you transfer it to the Hestral Land Trust. They would put up the money. The okay. town would not be putting up any money other than what the town might elect to contribute through its CPA funding, as I mentioned, the two potential grant Question proposals. back there. So the town in the end doesn't have to pay for this land to keep it the way you want it? So there's no money coming out of, out of the budget when the budget season comes to pay for the loan that they're going to take out? CPA income. That's that, what I'm asking. So it comes out of CPA money to pay, for, pay back what they're taking out to front the loan, basically, to, come to purchase it. Well, there'd be, there'd be a couple different... Without going into you know all of the details um, because there some of it is still in the in the works, the the takeout money, if you will, for Kestrel Land Trust would come from a combination of some CPA money for a conservation easement, potentially CPA money for a Habitat for Humanity lot, the sale of the farm land, perhaps with a one of the lots to go with the farm to a farmer. So that that would be the probably the that would in all likelihood be the bulk of the purchase, and so these combinations would make up what they need to pay uh, back their lender and their staff time, if you will. And so the only cost to the town, if you will, would be what the town agrees to contribute through its CPA funding, open space, and the housing accounts. Gotcha. Thank you. And I should add that we would need all those agreements in place, you know, with the potential farm purchaser, with the town, in order for us to accept the assignment of the right of first refusal. Um, it's tricky, but we're, we're happy. Yeah. We like challenging products. So. Right. And, and which is why, and I'm happy to stay, I'm not going to ask everyone else who's here up on behalf of this project, but I'm, which is why uh, the... January special town meeting is of importance to us because if indeed there is going to be a special town meeting, I've already talked with Marlene and I'm committed to get, and we've already discussed this at the CPA, uh, CPC committee, that we would take these two grant proposals out of our traditional order and move them forward along with the other one, which you're aware of, for the special town meeting so that we would know sooner rather than later if the town was willing to commit those funds. And if they're not, you know, it's the, you know, we, best effort, you know, no, nothing, nothing, tr nothing tried is, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yes. Um, the only thing I wanted to add, just as we're discussing it, I just wanted to go back to the um, Hatfield Master Plan that we paid thirty thousand mm -hmm. for, and I won't read it. But if you go to pages seven, fourteen, and fifteen, it all talks about preserving the rural character and all that. So I, I just want to say it seems to be in compliance with everything. And on, um, as I looked it up, on December twelfth, two thousand four, Hatfield also passed the right to farm bylaw that says the policy of the community is to conserve, protect, and encourage the maintenance and improvement of agricultural land for the production of food, other agricultural products and also its natural and ecological value. So I just wanted to point out that this does seem in line with everything that's been put in place so far by the town and the people's wishes. Yeah, I, pre I appreciate you bringing that up, Cindy. I mean, at the planning board, we've talked on a number of occasions about the master plan and the fact that in you know, numerous town uh, uh, surveys and uh, leading up to the master planning process, uh, you know, the rural character, the agricultural nature, and, and the agricultural economy of the town is e e extremely important. So right now, today, do you need anything from us? Okay. Actually, we would prefer that you do nothing today because we don't <laughs> want to start that other clock. We're good at doing nothing. <laughs> That's easy to do. I'm good at doing nothing. OK. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, Bob, the question is, is this something that is time sensitive where 
it can't wait till annual town meeting, or is that too far up? It would, it, it, uh, given what Mark had just said about the fact that for the Kestrel Land Trust and their board and their uh, benefactor to be comfortable putting up the money to purchase the property, they're going to want to know as much, if not entirely, that, you know, the, the sort of takeout, uh, the takeout uh, revenues are available. And so we, given the timeline that we have with uh, C, uh, Chapter 61A, the 120-day clock from October 8th, which is, Brian said, that's early February, and then a 90-day clock to purchase the property. We can't wait till Maytown meeting because by then it, it's it's just way too late. Okay. So, for, yeah. so for as far as CPA goes, it's more time sensitive. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, I, I thank you for yeah. presenting this to us okay. and giving the town more information about it. And I, I hope things work out with Kestrel Land Trust because I think it'd be nice to keep that land, you know, agricultural, if at all possible. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the amount of time you've given us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm receptive. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to move back to uh, appointments. Yeah, that's exactly Appointments, that's exactly. yeah, okay. Uh, make a motion to appoint Julian O'Connor to the local cultural council. Second. Motion made, motion seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so be it. Uh, I'm, I'm being told under appointments that Bay State Municipal has to be uh, e appointed as town the accountant. The appointment is town accountant. They were temporary. Uh, the board had appointed them temporary town accountant. We need a permanent appointment. Okay, so I'll make a motion, appoint Bay State Municipal as our town accountant. Is there a time frame on that? I'll second it, and then I'll ask the question. That's, yeah, that's for the board to discuss that. Yeah, do you want I to mean, make it for one year? Or yeah, let's do it for one, one year. I mean, just... Okay. I mean, stuff changes, things sure. happen. I, mm -hmm. I just didn't want it to, or, or whatever period these guys want. I just didn't want it to be an indefinite type of... Uh, got a question. Are you talking one year from today? Well, I don't. I, that's. I guess I don't know what, when it, is it expiring or something. I mean, what was our te what no, was our expiring? It, we do not have a permanent appointment for the town accountant. Justin oh, Cole was appointed temporary because temporary. Gotcha, our our gotcha, previous gotcha. account gotcha. was on leave, right? Thank you. Go ahead. I'm not aware that it has to be a, what do you mean, it, well, it's not a company, it, we would be appointing Justin Cole. Oh, okay, you, you, well, you said Bay State Municipal Accounting, so I, I did? Yes, you didn't say Justin, you said Bay State I Municipal Accounting. I thought I said Justin, okay, but yeah. well, so Justin was, was appointed, not Bay State Correct. Municipal yeah. Accounting. that's why I was catching you, because right. they didn't appoint a company. Right, so. right, but I think it was worded back then, a company or a person. I'm sure it, it may have been under was. that st particular statute. When we voted, we, those were the word. That was the right. Word. That statute allowed for a temporary for the accountant. the temporary one only. Oh. Right. Okay. I'll make a motion so, to appoint Justin Cole as a town accountant until September 1st, 2019. I'll suck and I only just pick the date to, yeah, to get I mean, us through town meeting, mm -hmm, get us right. and get make sure twenty eighteen and nineteen and everything are wrapped up. up with a regular appointment, so then they, he comes on the annual. The an, under the annual under appointments. The annual, so that would be April first to March thirty first. So you appoint him to March thirty first, and then he just goes on the regular cycle with everybody else. No. Okay. Well, because then we're just going to have to. In, Three months, we're going to have to appoint him again until, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I, I think we're still learning about mm -hmm. this whole what, what the future has in store for us. That's the only reason I was trying mm -hmm. to put a time frame on it, and it was no reflection on mm -hmm. Justin or Bay State. It was just, you know, pick, mm -hmm. pick, pick a time or pick a date. Well, if you're comfortable, you could just, you know, uh, the, the current appointment remains status quo. I can follow up um, if, if there is a, a time that, you know, that needs to be, if it, it has to be one year or three year. If you'd like me to do that, I'll be glad to. 
to I don't do think that. we need to. I think let's just okay. pick a time. Time. All right. So you said September of 2019. September 1st, 2019. Okay. Okay. Motion made to appoint Justin Cole to September. I have a second. I'm going to wait for a second before I get involved with the last one. Oh, God. I'm waiting for a second before yeah. there's discussion. Right, I'll sec second second that. for discussion. Sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, just a question about Justin's uh, uh, organizational situation. Is is he a sole proprietor or is he an LLC? Because if he's not, I don't think you can name him the town and county. Uh, I mean, are cut are are we paying him? Are are checks being cut to him directly as a hmm. sole proprietor or or an LLC? I believe they're an LLC, but he is being compensated uh, yeah, through the AP Are the warrant. checks being cut to Justin? No. Okay, so I don't think you can you appoint it. Justin, the town accountant. I think you, we need to appoint well, a county. state. Well, he's Hadley's, he's Hadley's town accountant. Right. He's listed on the website as, as Hadley's right. town accountant. Right. And pay, he says, Bay State Municipal, Justin Cole, well, town right. accountant it's for Hadley. Well, Bay State Municipal, Justin Cole, and I think that's what... That's what you guys have, have to do tonight. Unless Justin is a, is a sole proprietor or is an LLC um, organizationally and that checks are being cut to him directly, I don't believe you can appoint him a town accountant. Um, Why? Do you have to vote, vote on it tonight? Because that's what I was trying to say earlier. We could defer this to the yeah. next meeting and, and look it, into it. I don't think it's a it's, problem. It's not like. It's not like he's... Then I'll withdraw my motion. Or you can appoint him under the same conditions as had to. Yeah. Or, or what, well, the same conditions well, as you had. Well, I was going to say, the Board of Selectmen right. appointed him a temporary right. town accountant. That could remain... That appointment can remain so the status quo. Well. You could appoint, excuse me, you could appoint Bay State Municipal Accounting as the temporary town accountant with Justin being well, there. We don't know that, Mike, because the town clerk just said you can't do that. That's so let's just keep it as it is. It's temporary. Everything's working out fine. This should have been a 30-second yeah. vote. Mm -hmm. Let's go. What's next? I okay. withdrew my motion. Okay. So I have a motion? I, I withdrew it. So, or, so just table it's it? It's done. All right. We'll table it. Okay. Topic two. Discussion of January 2019 special town meeting and election. I, I just want to <coughs> give some background to people because I've, I've been asked why another special town meeting. And I want to go back a little ways. Uh, originally, we had put in for the sewer treatment grant, I mean a su uh, West Street sewer extension grant, hoping that it would come in October. We also knew last year that we had a $200,000 grant, dollar grant for the sewage treatment plant, and we also knew that there were some cost overruns on the town hall, and we were hoping to tie everything into October, but the state never got back to us, and as Brian had pointed out, time was getting short. We are going to lose the November grant. So at that time, we said, okay, we'll, we'll take the uh, grant special town meeting and we'll add the town halls uh, improvement project to see if they will fund it. But then what happened is we found out that if we went forward with the town hall improvement projects, then we would not be able to set our tax rate. If I got this all right, I hope. And, and that's why we said it's better to do it in January for the town hall improvements because the town hall improvements, there was two articles back 2015 or so, the first article was just bring up the building to ADA compliancy, uh, handicap accessible, uh, elevators, and fire protection. And then there was a second article which said to uh, put a second ramp in that went down to uh, do the kitchen and to move the inspector's office because the elevators was going in and they didn't whatever space they were losing from the kitchen they wanted back. And both of these projects came in over. The reason they came in over is some of the reasons were they've been three or four years now behind. We did get an architectural 
Review Board extension for two years, which kicked in this past June. So uh, projects usually take 18 months. We're on the clock here. And, and the cost overruns uh, were, I believe, what, 390000 on one, 283 or so on another, more or less. Mm -hmm. And so the people can decide if they want to go forth. Uh, with both of these projects, or if they do just bring this, at least get the building handicap access, get the fire protection to this building, then that'll be their decision. So that is the reason why uh, we are looking at a special <coughs> uh, town meeting in January, in, to the later end of January, because now we got that 18 month cycle for this project. And as we're finding, the longer we wait, the longer it costs us. And the other reason for the cost overruns is originally they did a fire test uh, for the fire protection system here, and they said the water pressure was, was good. But we came time to estimate the job and go out to bed. They did another test. They said they needed to put in a fire pump. And we said, wait a minute, it passed last time. They went back and retested, but they said it did not pass the pressure test. The only way to, to get the pressure exact for what they need in this building is to run a, um, a line from School Street all the way down at a cost of a half a million dollars, $500,000. And that, that alone was over 100000 to run a separate service from the pole into the building, a separate electrical system, a separate pump. And there's other reasons for the cost overruns. But anyways, uh, I just want to, I don't know if anybody wants to add of why we feel we need a special town meeting in January. I just want to get that out there. Uh, Could I, I just like to add uh, that um, okay. January at, at this point does make it very tight. Um, I'm aware that, um, you know, there is a period of time in January the moderator would not be available. Um, so if you were to do it sooner, um, the warrant would have to be signed um, before January 1st. <laughs> Um, so there's not much time. Uh, we could look at maybe having the town meeting after January 28th. Well, I, I, I mean, if it's in the February, I think we're still probably safe. If we went into February, if we have to. I mean, because I mean, tonight's discuss when we have it, right? We haven't said anything in, in stone or concrete of we have to have it in January, I mean. Right. But the board I, had just said they would take it up. But my understanding is now with, with this property also coming up on the 61A, mm -hmm. that sort of, uh, sort of makes it more important to have the meeting sooner than town meeting, right? Mm -hmm. I mean. Brian would like to. Well, so a couple things. Um, just to reiterate what... Um, what Ed said was the the importance of this town hall project is, uh, or I should say, it's very important. This town hall project get completed. We've already we will have now gotten an extension from the state for a total of seven years, and we haven't done one thing in that second phase of this town hall. So we have until June of 2020, I believe. To, to wrap operating. it up, it's got to be operating, <laughs> not starting. Oh, yeah. It's got to be right. up and running. Mm -hmm. So, again, to reiterate what Ed said, that's that's the reason for having it in January rather waiting till May, mm -hmm. and just have nothing really happening right. because we need your approval um, for the go ahead. And it's a two part process, right, Lydia? It's going to be um, because it's a debt exclusion request. It's going to vote on town at town meeting, and then there will also be a special election. To vote for it. So um, I, I, I know there's people here in the audience that we, we, we talk that uh, we don't like to keep having special town meetings, but you know, it's, it's the nature of our business and the type of community we're in and, and, the, and the type of uh, policies and, and um, government that we have that so many things have got to come to the public. We got to do what you got to do. So um, I just wanted to say, but, the, to say that. I also think Having had Bob Wagner speak tonight, I mean, I don't think whether it's on January 14th or January 28th 
I don't think those two weeks make a huge difference. And I, I would, well, I the would, moderator is not here. I would sit here. Well, I know, I know it's got to go with that schedule. I guess my point is whether, you know, it's the end of January or the middle of January. I think we'd be okay. And I also think that having that little bit of extra time, I think the two weeks, sort of makes everyone's life a little easier uh, between the town clerk and and us and more information, um, whatever Bob's still working on with Kestrel and, and those types of things. So, yeah, I would only say that um, whether it was the 14th or the 28th, the 28th probably, as you're right, Brian does give us more time. Um, if it did, if it did actually end up in February, then I think we would be out of. I don't think we would be in a position to act on the 61A. So that's our 120 days. We would be up. beyond the 120 days, and I don't think without some assurance from the town of the allocation of CPA funding that Kestrel Land Trust would be in a position to be able to mm -hmm. act on that transfer. So, so oh, if, if there's an opportunity to have it in January, that I would certainly encourage that. When was the 28th of Monday, Arlene? When you, or? The 28th is a Tuesday. Monday. Oh, Monday. Okay. Also, I want to point out, on, um, yeah. if so we have a special town meeting, we also have to have a vote on this, right? Yep. Isn't this two parts because it's debt exclusion? Not yeah, only yeah. do we have a no. special election. You have to have a special election for the debt exclusion questions only. The right. CPA funding is just the special town meeting. Once that's approved, that's approved, they can run with that. Mm -hmm. Um, so it really has nothing to do with the special election as far as Bob's concerned. But the, but the town hall, the articles, if those, they pass. Those have to, uh, the ballot would have two questions on it right. for those two articles. Right. But that's the only thing that would be on the election. So that time frame is they just would like to have the special election sometime in, you know, as soon as possible after the special town meeting so that they can start getting the bids out and everything right. like that and not have to wait until May. Mm. So that's the time frame for that part of it. Do you have a um, procedurally or legally some sort of a time frame I, between I, special I, town meetings and elections? Does it? Well, the special town, as long as a special town meeting is within 35 days of the special town election, then the last day to register to vote can be the same day. So I don't have to stay here until 8 o'clock at night on two nights, just right. one night. But so if we had, I, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. So if we, it doesn't have to be a week apart. Like Okay, like I was going to say, so if we had the last week of January special town meeting right. and the second or third week of February, depending the, the on election, the, yeah, you know, uh, something like that, right? I'm going to be away too, the yeah. 14th. And when it comes to those kind of articles and a special town election, yeah. there's lots of reports and everything so, I have to file. So I need time after we set the date for the special mm -hmm. town election to be able to do all those reports. So it's not like we could have it on February 12th and then Understood. I can just get on a plane. I, I mean, I'm yeah, just so. throwing it out to whatever yeah. works best for you. Lydia. Yeah, I just, so. you know, I just didn't know if there was a built in procedural time frame. there there is because that whole thing about Between the two. when you vote to have the election right. you know the time frame for getting the questions to the town clerk then the time for yep. posting and you know there, there is there's a whole so, so it sounds like here. we would need to try to get a date tonight for the special town meeting mm -hmm. so that you know what to work with for then right. lining up the election right. after that right because we the warrant has to be posted 14 days prior right. town council needs to review it as well yep. I, I threw out some, some dates. I had some a, a calendar for a possible election on February 19th. Um, the last day to post would be February 5th. The last day to register to vote would be January 30th. Um, and actually, it would be earlier. Let's see, it would be January 23rd as the special town meeting was. To, so it would be 20 days before whatever the special town meeting was. Um, then the last day for the selectmen to submit the questions would be January 15th. The selectmen's meeting to approve the questions would be like January 14th, and then post the selectmen's meeting on January 10th. But if all of that posting, selectmen's questions, and the posting in the, of the meeting and the day the meeting that the selectmen decide to have the election. Um, was sooner 
then later, that would be good because that gives me enough time to tell people, hey, this is the last day to register to vote. The last one we did, we approved it on like a Thursday and the last day to register to vote was that Monday. It's like there's no time to publish in the paper, there's no time to, you know, it's legal, but it's just not, mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem right. So when should we have, what's the date we should have the special town meeting? I don't care about that date. You can do whatever you want. The person behind you does, though. Well, we, we usually hold them, we usually Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Right. Yeah. So the 29th of January, well, is that? The 29th is the Tuesday. Is that good for you? And you're back, right? Does that work Unless for you? plane crashes. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> January 29th. Does that seem, I mean, without... So January 29th will work. That's a Tuesday. That's a Tuesday. That's good with us, yeah. Then I'll make a motion to have the uh, special town meeting on Tuesday, January 29th. Uh, I guess we got to find out on... I guess we do first make the motion, right? Second. I have a... Second. Any discussion? Can I just make a comment that you know, sure. we, we, people are more susceptible to becoming part of it and buying into it if it's time sensitive, if it's mandated. Certainly for Bob in his situation, it's time sensitive. That makes sense. I know you're talking about this thing with the uh, uh, the town hall renovation. There's some time sensitivity to there. I can only encourage you to be careful of other people trying to get something on there as a question that should really go in front of the full town boards because it, it becomes a matter of faith and trust in our town government of people. I know when I was much younger, way back, you would see special town meetings just sort of slip something through. And people were blindsided two weeks later saying, when did that pass? And there was a special town meeting. Now, we have more rules of quorums, and people watch that a little carefully more. But you've got to be careful what other questions in the next two weeks when you put things together. Our people are going to try to give you good reason to say, we really got to get this book brought up and brought up. Uh, I, I agree with you, because right now the only thing we're going forward with is the town hall and, and Bob. I mean, I don't, I don't see anything else, and I'm so not going to... Because it is where people see an opportunity... And it, it plays out poorly after the fact. There, there may be something coming from the school regarding um, sped costs. Mm -hmm. So, just so what, whatever can you know. can truly wait for annual, mm -hmm. we really should try to be so careful of that. I know this year we've been we had the mandate from DOR, got it. We had the the time sensitivity of of the pollution system, got it. You know, you've got something here with CPA, and and there's there's a way through this where it's not going to hit budgets. Makes all the sense in the world, but be, just be careful of the things that should be at annual. Any more discussion? Okay, motion made, motion seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, I guess we have her date. Motion carries. Tuesday the 29th. 29th. Meeting, because I'll get a calendar together for a proposed... Um, We're looking at January 9th. January 9th and January 23rd for our regular meetings. Oh, we do it meetings. now. It won't be till next here. year. Okay. When to do, when to do to, the election? Yeah, pick a date. I mean, I don't know. I guess all I would say is we would rely on you. Yeah. And so by us waiting, you know, what, what's gained from it? If you have the information, if you're, if you're not prepared to speak to it, then certainly we can wait. But, but if I can just throw a comment on, on what you're saying is we live in an era right now where many people, subscriptions for newspapers are dying. We all know that. Social media is killing itself. People are bailing out of that. There is such a lack of communication for a town to communicate with the town's people. We don't have a town crier. We don't have a website that is either informative or people log into it to find out. And what I'm watching in the last year or two with the death of social media or the injury to it is there is very little way to communicate anything we're doing even in this room. You take a look at all the good work John does at <coughs> these things and you take a look at how many people watch that video and it's rather small compared to the population of this town based on registration voters or 
people that literally live here and don't even register. So communication is going to become a very serious problem for us. You, you post a town meeting, who knows that you post an election date. The more times you can say it at a meeting, the more times you can bring it out to people, the better. Because it's, it's going to get worse for all of us, as how do people know what we're doing. You know, you can wink at a girl in the dark, you know what you're doing, but she doesn't have a clue. And that's what is starting to happen. Just an opinion. Told you to stop that. <laughs> no, it's just, it's the truth, though. You know, I don't know how people are going to hear and understand, because newspapers are dying. I, I wish it wasn't so, but I don't know how people are going to find out. Just a comment. Maybe people could give us suggestions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, we maybe posted, in town hall, we somebody posted has everywhere. I put, you know, mm -hmm. things on the website. We do things on the on Facebook, you and it's it like, on the wall. yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And, and still, we put the sandwich board out. Yeah, front. The sandwich um, board, and people come to a meeting if there's a certain thing that they're interested in, and then they move off. And I get it; they're busy. They've been working all day. They've got kids. They've got work tomorrow, but. You're dealing with rather important things, and if they don't know about it, yeah, you I can also get the word to you can also use the code word system because there's a lot of people a lot of people that have signed up for just to get community notices, also not just the emergency and, stuff. And so we did a, do that for the right. last special town meeting, and and still we just barely, you know. I mean, possibly in the future we really beef up a website that has more of a of a news thing, a little news feed, or or say an electronic town crier. I don't know, but. We're, we're not the only town, but we're all very poor at getting the word out. And they're poor at receiving the word, so it's a two-way street. Yeah. Well, I still, so. I still bump into people, and they ask me a question, yeah. and they say, when did you vote at that? And I said, at the last special meeting. I said, were you there? And they said, no, I don't go to them. Exactly. <laughs> still not exactly. So how do you run a town when nobody's listening? Or they're not hearing us. It's difficult. Oh. Yeah. Well, All right. if you're if we're concerned, I don't know where Joe's coming from at this point. I tend to agree with him. Um, and I'm not sure if you're concerned about there being a quorum at this special, because there there certainly are a couple of articles that are are, are very timely, and and things that need to be voted on and passed so that certain things can happen for the good of the community. One of the things that I've found and seen over the years uh, that tends to bring out our voters um, to a meeting, whether it be special or not, is a controversial issue. Controversies, yeah. believe me, um, people become aware of, of things that are controversial, or at least things that some people feel strongly about, and some people may feel strongly about the opposite view. Um, and so, all of a sudden I had this thought that the town government committee has provided you guys with a report on potentially expanding the board of selectmen to five members. That could be a rather controversial issue for this community. I don't know if it is or it would be, but it could be a very controversial issue. Um, one that would generate a lot of a lot of interest if, in fact, people found out that that topic was coming up for consideration. And so, what I'm wondering about is that perhaps the board could use that issue as an article. Well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to as far as myself. So, I mean, that I'm, I'm not going to I won't entertain that. Okay, I'm just. I'm just I, that should be at a you know, that to, should be an annual town meeting. I I hear what you're saying, but I, as far as myself, maybe my mem my my colleagues feel differently. They can override it. No, I I agree. I think that should it go should to be the annual. annual town meeting. So there's more people. I'm just throwing out, you know, trying to be, yeah. you know, again, I thought of this maybe potentially controversial issue might get more people to a special. But on that uh, last but last year at ATM, the question was, can we look into it? It wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. And, there's, and I know many years ago when I was younger, they would bring up something controversial, especially with the school, just to get people there, knowing it was going to be voted down. Just but that just games. seemed that's rather cool games. to yeah. get people that upset to come to a meeting. I mean, that's not what town meeting's about. It's to bring people together. 
and to explain things properly. Well, these articles right. that are so coming up are going to hit their pocketbook, so if they're not concerned about their pocketbook, and when you explain then, that, yeah, I yeah. mean, we, you mentioned it's going to hit your pocketbook, so if you're not there, don't cry about having to spend more money. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, that should be enough of controversy in itself for people to show up, yeah, I would I, think. Yeah, I was responding to what Joe was saying. I'm not sure exactly what the point he was trying to make other than we need to do a better job of communicating and getting people to attend our meetings. I think that's going to be and, a, that's and, an ongoing you know, issue in this town for correct, since right. I was a kid. Correct. Well, <laughs> what he's and, saying and, has been going on as long as I can remember. Yeah. And Michael, it was just to use right. this venue to to help get people to understand that we can explain out as much as we wish, but they need to listen in too. They need to be more attuned to what's going on. It's right. not to tick them off or to use shock value at all. It, it's to well, legally, we can away. only do so much. Absolutely. We can only and, do so much. Like the town said, is, people have to vote on things. But it's like when Andrew right. said, you know, the town has to operate, but when you tell them how much it's going to cost their pocketbook, it's their money. Okay, I'm going to entertain one more question on this subject, then and we're going to move on. Terry. Town, tax bills go out next week. We should look into, unless you, I don't know if you have to vote for it or not, but if tax bills are going out next week and we're doing a large mailing, why don't we put together some kind of informational thing saying that we're having a special town meeting on January 29th. That's a nice idea. And give the idea, give the topics of what's going to be discussed and how important, somehow drop something on mm -hmm. one page, gets folded up. Sharon just brought it up to me, so that's where the suggestion's coming from. Census but is going out too. Well, either place. So we're doing a mailing, so we're spending money on postage and mailing and everybody in the town's going to get it. Perfect. That's the way we should be looking at informing That's the townspeople idea. because you open up your tax bill. Yeah. Everybody has to, I mean, most people, everybody should be opening up their tax bill. <laughs> so just a suggestion since they're going out, we're stuffing them next week. So That's a very good suggestion. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And that's what it takes, people to give opinions. Right. It's all a lot of little things that will make it but I know. I, and we I, don't, I don't think we need a motion on doing I wasn't this sure if you guys right? as a select board have to make, or to make a decision on doing a mailing. The board does vote to, if you're going to add an insert into the real estate taxes. The board has a history of voting. Not if, not if you do it in the census. No, the tax bills, I said, right. the real estate tax bills. What I'm saying is I could do it in, in the census. The census goes to more people than the tax bills do. Because the census goes to all the residents. Right, right. Tax no, bills go included to in the real estate the property owners. So, you know, for apartments, you're, you're, the census is going to reach more people. So, so whichever you want would, to do. That would be my suggestion. Also, the census go up? Uh, we're, we're stuffing and folding on the 27th. Hopefully we'll get it all done on the 27th. If not, we're running into the morning of the 29th. So. Of this month? Yes. Next week. Okay. That's I, mean, do we, I mean, we don't, for the census, we don't have to no. entertain that, right? No. Nope. Um, I just think we need to. Um, set an election date. You might as well hit them both. Set yeah, the election date, yeah, hit the town meeting, them, and I, I like the idea of maybe because we don't have the question, you know, we don't have the questions yet, we have the topics. Mm -hmm. So maybe just a very high level here's, you know, whatever somebody thinks a sentence or two on. You know, however it works. So I'm I know we're in good hands. I'm looking at February 19th for an election date. It's yep. a Tuesday. Oh, it's a Tuesday. All right. Okay. Um, and then I'll work with those dates and put a calendar together. But there's nothing the, funky, right? Like it's the day before President's Day. It is. Maybe? It's the day after. It, yeah, it's the day after. But I mean, when you're doing your calculation of days and stuff, if that matters. That's a holiday. No, I don't Monday's think so, a holiday. Because nothing falls on the holiday to, you know, like okay. the let. It's yeah, not just, the, so just that want, Monday. So didn't want you sending a, something out. Monday is a holiday. The 18th yeah. is a holiday. So I'm just just so you're you have the highway guys usually help you set up the room and do moving around. So just I know there's no there's no way to work Also, on that be night. the school week off, so you may have a lot of folks. Oh, is that the third week? Yeah, of February? It's always best oh, that's okay. Okay. How about the fe How about February 26th? Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a Tuesday. And you need to vote on that. Yeah, you need to mm -hmm. set, you need to say we want to have a special election and vote on it for February 26th. Okay, I make a motion to have a special election on February 26th. Second. Second. Motion made, motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. Motion Aye. carries. Okay. Do we need anything else for this special town meeting or special election that we have to do tonight? Yeah. Not tonight. No. We just need the warrant articles and the questions to approve. We can do okay. that. Um, and you can stuff in a census envelope uh, yeah. the information. Yeah. So. One February 26th is the last day to register to vote is Wednesday, February 6th, and I'm not here. So I may need help from somebody to sit in the office and wait for no one to come in and register to vote <laughs> till 8 o'clock because legally I'm required to be open till 8 o'clock and I'm going to be at a conference. Well, you have assistant now, right? I do, but um, she's only 12 hours a week. I can't have her stay till 8 o'clock. She only works from 9 to nine to 1. It's, she's not on salary. She's hourly. Um, I will contact the Board of Registers to see if somebody can be here, but there's only one that doesn't mind staying when it's dark and by themselves in the town hall. The other don't really like staying. It's, we'll have two of them staying. Yeah. I, I could. Dark or so so I, I've got to try to work around that. So. Okay. Uh, we don't need any more no discussion on this topic then, right? We can move on. All right. We need anything else on this topic as far as we got our dates voted in, we got mm -hmm. letter stuffer, and. Okay, one question to you, Marlene, on the annual license renewals. Mm hmm. I'm a member of two, two of the uh, clubs, so should I? You should abstain. Okay, so I I can make a motion for everything except the two club we can do licenses. Well, I think we can encompass all of them, though, and then. And then you just abstain. Just, just yeah. abstain. I'll just abstain. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. Okay. You guys, you guys work it out. So I do have a question on one of them, though the the posts. Did we um, traditionally we given a We've lessened the license fee. Correct. The Board of Selectmen did that last year. But we, I, that was my question. Did we make it permanent? Yeah. You okay. did. It was permanent All right. last Because yeah. we kept coming. Right. Mm -hmm. That was, yeah. I wanted to verify that. Oh, then I will make a motion to um, renew the licenses for 2019 as uh, presented this evening. I second that. I will abstain, but uh, okay. So motion made, motion seconded. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I abstain. Okay. All right. See, that was that was easy. Okay. okay, we have a request from uh, Ed. Um, Bob had a question. Yes. Uh, if I may, on topic A, on the old stage road land donation, do you need um, any me uh, to represent the planning board on that topic, or is that? No, they're just going to vote the conservation restriction and sign oh, okay. it tonight. Right. Since Lydia's here, they can sign it to make them notarize that. I got my stamp. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Good. Well, well, since you're here, we, 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 I'll take this out of order. Okay. We'll go to topic eight then. Okay. That's um, no problem. So on topic eight, let's find topic eight. Do you want to speak on this behalf, or no? I just didn't want, want to leave. If there were any questions regarding the planning board's approval and support of this, or if there were any questions that still remained, I'd be happy to stay. But you guys have any questions? I don't. Thank you. Right. Bob. Open space came before the yeah. the board of selectmen yeah. Yeah, some time ago. I, I thank the boards for their effort on this. I think it's great. So, um, so we just need a motion to accept this. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept this uh, quick claim deed. Uh, what else do I have to say on this deed? Conservation uh, deals restriction. With... Approve the conservation restriction. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve those restrictions. Okay, a second. And I have a second. Aye. Uh, yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? So motion carries. So topic eight's done. Thanks, Bob. Okay, we have a request for extended hours, uh, double D's bar. Uh, it says, I can, I would like to extend one hour at the double D's on New Year's Eve to 2 a.m. 
Make I that motion to approve. I'll second that. We've done it in the past. There's never been an issue. All right. Motion made, motion second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. motion carries. And the police department should be notified of that as well. Okay. Um, town administrator report. Um, topic five will go to Marlene. Uh, Hampshire Power cost. Uh, Hampshire Power notified the town, which the town of Hatfield is a participant in Hampshire Power, and that's for all its municipal uh, buildings. And uh, recently, well, not recently, the letter the town received recently um, was notification that there will be a cost increase. Uh, I reached out to, to Hampshire Power and left a message, and I followed up with them today because I haven't received a call back. Um, but I just want to verify the increase. I and mean, it, it appears that it's less than a, a penny per kilowatt hour. Um, this increase is a result of a solar carve-out to compliance quantity. And Hampshire Power has incurred that cost for many years. Under a, a DOER lifted the program capacity cap, which now allows Hampshire Power to turn that cost increase over to the municipality or the participant. Um, so again, I, I'm still waiting for a call back. I just want to confirm that, but I just want to share that information that um, there, there will be an increase in the cost of the electricity supplier. Okay. I'll follow up Thanks. again at the next meeting on yeah. that. I know that's not very informative, but I, I, do, I would feel better talking to Hampshire Power. Sure. All right. Uh, financial update? Um, as you know, the town um, submitted its tax recap. The tax rate has been set at $13.89 for fiscal year 19. Um, I also had uh, a discussion with Justin Cole regarding fiscal year 18 reconciliation process. Um, they have completed uh, a number of, of tasks <coughs> and the Excuse peer me. review. Um, there are still some items outstanding that are issues, and um, the peer peer review um, is 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 moving slowly in in those areas where there's issues. It's with debt service, um, and also with the uh, accounts receivable, and then tying them to the AP warrants. However, though, um, Justin still feels very confident about the auditor being ready for the auditors the week of January 7th. So his staff is working seven days a week. Um, good. So. That's good. You know, the financials have, has 18's draft management financials been submitted to the DOR yet? No. So they're... they're He's still in the process of preparing he's still, those. He's reconciling fiscal year eight for the for the audit. Correct. Okay, and prior to the audit, will they go to the DOR? I don't know. That's not the plan. I haven't talked to to Justin about that. I I don't know. I can follow up with him. I I would expect that they will. Well, he will be filing the. Um, uh, the end of the year report. Schedule so your a. question is, will Schedule A in the end of the year report go to DOR before the audit is done? I believe that's what you're asking. Yeah, well, Schedule A usually accompanies the the management. Correct. I believe that is his intent to submit those to DOR before the audit. Okay, and you have any idea when that's going to happen? I, it would be the end of this month. I can confirm that for him. And we're not in a position at all to uh, have had free cash certified yet. Uh, I anticipate free cash being certified probably by the end of January. January. Yeah. DOR wants to see the audit done before free cash is certified. Sure. Well, that makes yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That so if the auditors are in here the week of January 7th, they need that whole week, and then they'll you know tie up the reports the following week. Um, yeah, we're looking at the end of January for free cash to be yeah, certified. Which would be helpful for in the throes of budgeting at that at that point. Oh, so yes. it still would mm -hmm. be helpful to know that. Mm -hmm. And how about nineteen? 
Uh, where are we, where are we, how are we doing on that? The treasurer's office is reconciling to her books for 19, but as soon as 18 is closed, we will hit the ground running to reconcile to the accountant. Okay, so we have no, we have the accountant's office has not done any reconciliations, monthly they reconciliations. They can't yeah. until 18 is closed. The, yeah, you can't account, you can't reconcile to the general ledger until 18 is closed. Okay, and, and excuse me for asking one more question. Uh, and Justin still feels comfortable that that he's going to get 19 back on on the typical uh, municipal accounting calendar, mm -hmm. such that standard, yeah, Massachusetts that standard. That we're going to be accounting. basically closing out 19 sometime after June 30th, and and all of, you know that will transpire according to we'll be back on track by then. That's yeah. the plan. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's the plan, and we're sticking to it, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Marlene, holiday schedule. Uh, as you know, um, Christmas Eve is, is Monday. Um, I had inquired with the Board of Selectmen if it would consider, you know, giving employees some t Some employees are already planning on being out on Monday. Um, so I thought I would ask if the board would consider either shortening the day um, or if you're interested in considering closing town hall. I was just thinking the town hall's already closed on Saturday and Sunday, and then to reopen it for just a half a day on Monday. I'm good Monday, with that. Um, Close for the whole day. Just didn't make sense to, to do that. I, I personally don't have a problem with that. I mean, this past year we, we asked uh, the employees not to take a pay raise and we also asked uh, department heads to cut back a percentage so uh, everybody sacrificed this past year so I think it's that the least we can do is to give Small them that one gesture. Day. Yep. I agree. That's my opinion. I agree. Okay so I'll make a motion to uh, close for, for that Monday. The 24th. The 24th. Second. Motion made, motion seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure the employees will appreciate that. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to go up to the top to the approval of minutes because I, I missed that so okay. far. Make a motion to approve the minutes of November 29th, 2018. I'll second that motion. I've read them. I just got to find them. <clears throat> okay, motion made and motion seconded to approve the minutes for November 29th. That was the me that was before the town the special town meeting, you know, our meeting with the finance committee and Dave Prickett. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Make a motion to accept the minutes of September 19th, 2018. Okay, I'll second that. Um, Any discussion? Uh, yes. On uh, page two, where it says FRTA bus stop. So select one doty said the town, da da da. I wasn't here. So this needs to be struck. Uh, and it's noted on the front page that I was not present. Hmm. Uh, I just remember you discussing at a different meeting Probably a different about one. the FRTA bus stop. So that shouldn't be in there, right? Right. I wasn't present. I, I don't remember the exact conversation. Obviously, if you weren't there, you didn't say it that night. But I'm wondering if it was more of a reference that... I was that I just thinking the same thing. I may have prior. updated the board on a meeting that Phil Genovese, Cindy Doty, and myself had right. with I FRTA. Think that's what it, yeah. And I may have been discussing the uh, yeah. discussion that we had with FRTA. So that should that be reworded to reflect that that you were discussing? Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, discussed. Um, Any other changes? Previously, or? I would so I would just previous, add the word previously, previously or at a previous mm -hmm. meeting or something. Or. Can we approve it with a change then? And then we're done. Yeah. Right, so we just, the minutes shouldn't 
refer to your your being to present. A president, right. right. They they should just reflect that a no. um, your suggestion at a meeting with FRTA. So I'll make it a motion How to approve at it with a candidate. meeting yeah, with amended. FRTA. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Say one more. Yeah, motion to accept the minutes of August twenty eighth, twenty eighteen. I'll second that. Um, any discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Uh, I think we have left HR policy, right? Yep. Topic seven. Yep. HR policy review. And looking at this, Marlene, the only changes I see is related to uh, section 15.71. Would that be correct? I don't see any other changes. That, that is correct. And, and just for the board's information, I did reach out to town council about this. Um, I had sent him a copy of the current policy, HR policy. I also forwarded to him Chapter 149, Section 105D and CMR 804 as referenced in here. There is a difference in, a difference in language regarding the... Um, the probationary period, uh, Chapter 149, Section 105D states that it cannot exceed uh, three consecutive months. CMR 804 of 8.0 says um, six months. So I, I want to know which, which prevails, which regulation statute prevails. So and I'm waiting. I haven't received a response. Yeah, I'd be interested in what he says. Right. So I had, when I reviewed Chapter 149, uh, yes, 149, that's why I, I recommended that change. Mm -hmm. Then when I, I reviewed uh, Regulation 804, it states six months. Because yeah, then again, it refers to the initial probationary period. So right. I, I wasn't sure which which it meant. Right. right. That's good. That's I had, the only I had thought I, had I would hear that. back from town council before this evening's meeting, um, but at, at this point, this is the the remaining uh, remaining benefits under the benefits section. The board had reviewed. Yeah. And just for the people at home, this section for the most part was just kind of a cleanup because yes. it was called. Maternity leave, and now it's and called it is now parental, parental leave. leave. And so a lot of this was to, to edit it, and so that's you know, right. As a reference to either the father or the mother or a parent, or um, you know, in mm -hmm. case people wonder what we're discussing, mm -hmm. I just want to, so and we're going to hold this till we verify which of those. I, I would uh, recommend okay. that, and and I did review uh, the family medical leave, um, and and that's all accurate. Yep. There are no changes yeah, good. Um, recommended there. And then the same with the Small Necessities Leave Act. Right. Yeah, that's under state law Nothing anyway. has changed. Yeah. Oh, and then the military leave as well. Yeah, that's state law also. Mm -hmm. So I, yes, I would recommend that we okay. delay this. The okay, that covers everything. And now the last item will be unanticipated new business, if we have any. Yeah. Come from me. Okay, before you leave, we have need signatures, so if that is all we have. Yep, oh, uh, just remind everybody that Sunday is Luminarium, so hope to see you at Town Hall, and I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Thank you, John.